The latest UK case of coronavirus is the first to be contracted within the country rather than abroad. When COVID-19 reached the UK in early 2020, we knew that the virus's consequences would not be limited to infection and case rates. Lockdowns and restrictions would have monumental social effects, including on mental health, finances, social cohesion and behaviours. I'm Dr Daisy Fancourt and with Professor Andrew Stepto and the COVID-19 Social Study Research Team, we created the UK's largest study tracking the everyday experiences of adults during the pandemic. Our study was able to happen because of the ESRC-led March Network, a network of over 2,000 academic and community partners. The March Network helped form the bedrock of our COVID-19 social study, which totaled 1.2 million online surveys over 105 weeks from more than 70,000 individuals, allowing us to understand how the pandemic and social restrictions affected people's lives. We examined how mental health and well-being changed, how health behaviours such as diet and exercise changed, how the pandemic affected people financially, patterns in loneliness levels, abuse and suicidal thoughts, the experiences of people with long COVID, and which groups were more vulnerable to adverse experiences. We also looked at how government policies affected people, whether people trusted the government and its decisions or had confidence in the health service, and to what extent people complied with social distancing restrictions. We also investigated the experiences of people who were at particular risk of poor mental health by conducting over 400 telephone interviews with individuals and organisations. We were able to see differences across age groups, gender, location, economic backgrounds, professions and multiple other factors, allowing us to truly explore and compare how COVID-19 affected people. Most notably, our COVID-19 social study found that inequalities that existed before COVID-19 have been exacerbated by the pandemic, meaning that those who carried heavier psychological burdens or faced financial hardship before the pandemic are now worse off and need urgent attention and prioritisation. The study's findings have had many impacts. We've had remarkable stories at an individual level of how people have been affected by taking part. For example, using the data to help them track and manage their own mental health, seek help if they needed it, connect with others, and engage in healthier behaviours. At a community level, charities and local authorities used our data to decide when to implement mental health support for the public, as well as identify which population groups needed the most support, estimate the socio-economic impact of the pandemic in certain regions and how attitudes towards the vaccine and boosters varied. So we used the COVID-19 social study to help us develop a map of vaccine hesitancy for the UK. We worked with Daisy and her team to understand some of the main factors that could make people more hesitant to taking the COVID-19 vaccine. And then based on those findings, we found publicly available data sets, spatial data sets that allowed us to map for local authorities within the UK where people might be more hesitant. And then we shared this map with the wider voluntary and community sector, uh, which played a vital role in the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. As the British Red Cross, we ran a Vaccine Voices program, which was trying to dispel some of the disinformation around the vaccine for people who might feel especially hesitant. And we could target to certain population groups based on the findings from Daisy's study. It is our judgment and it is... Nationally, SAGE relied on our data during crucial times in the pandemic when the government was faced with decisions regarding how and when social restrictions should be enforced. The NHS has used our research to plan for mental health service demands and when to step up and step down public mental health support. Internationally, key findings from the COVID-19 social study were disseminated to ministries of health across WHO Europe our study's design was then used as the basis for the development of WHO Europe's own Behavioural Insights COVID-19 surveys, which are now run in 33 countries. Without the ESRC-led March network, this study would never have happened with the pace and impact that it has. We're incredibly indebted to the remarkable team efforts of the scientists involved in the study, our funders and advisors, the policy, health and community organisations we've collaborated with, and of course the remarkable efforts of all of our participants who've given their time so generously. Mm -hmm.